But if Nebraska does miss on Dylan Raiola, number one, who is their backup option or is there a backup option? And two, could Daniel Kalen from Bellevue West be in the mix if Nebraska needs a new quarterback priority? Yeah, I, I, it is interesting. I know that people don't want to think about it. Um, and it, it, it's interesting for a few reasons. Number one is that it sounds weird to even say Nebraska is putting all of their eggs in the Dylan Rayola basket because, of course, you put all of your eggs in the Dylan Rayola basket. He's the number one pl player in the country, not just the number one quarterback, the number one player. So, of course, you're going to do that, okay? So that's not even a question to do it. But if they do happen to miss on him, one thing that really makes this fascinating to me is that there have not been a lot of, if any, new scholarships offers that have gone out for the 2024 class at quarterback just yet for Matt Rule, right? We've seen scholarship offers go out for a number of other positions, um, but we just haven't seen it for quarterback, which is, is a big time indicator that they are telling Dylan that he is their guy and that they're going to be locked in with him until they can't be anymore. He tells them no, um, which again is the right thing to do. But one of the other quarterbacks that Nebraska has actually kept in contact with um, is Danny Kalen, right? And I think that, that that part of it, and you have to, if you're Dylan, though, you do understand that because he's Danny is right here in the backyard at Bellevue West. You're obviously recruiting two of his wide receivers in Davon Hall and Isaiah McMorris. So you're not going to just ignore him when you go to campus or if, you know, they have an event and he comes out. So I do think that Danny Kalen is in the mix um, for that guy if it is not da Dylan Rayola. Um, and I think that that would be a, a fine, I hate to even say backup, because most years that would be the Nebraska's top choice and it would just be fine. Like it would be kind of wrapped up and it would be totally okay because what you're seeing with Kalen is his recruitment blew up kind of early on, right? And he got that, I think it was North Carolina or Florida State. I'm sorry, it was Florida State that offered really early. Then Nebraska kind of came in. Then his recruitment kind of went on pause. And as he was in his sophomore year, he really split time, didn't really play that much. To his credit, and I always say this about Danny Kalen, after that kind of rough sophomore season where he was expected to blow up in high school and didn't, his credit, he went back in the lab, right? Between his sophomore and junior year, really got a lot better, got bigger and stronger, came back his junior year, had a really good year last year, continued to see his recruitment blow up. You're starting to see, again, some additional offers come in. North Carolina, Miami, Colorado, among others, have come in here recently. He just went out to Colorado to see Coach Prime a couple of weeks ago uh, when the contact period was going on. Um, and I know he wanted to get down to Miami as well. And so his recruitment is taking off nicely, right? And so he's a he's He's got options. And so that's what another factor will make this really interesting is he has the luxury to not necessarily wait around for Nebraska if he doesn't want to, though I think he will um, in the end and kind of see what happens with the Dylan Rayola situation.